welcome to this show so thanks for joining me i understand obviously you guys have got your kids and stuff when you're in quarantine which is hectic i'm sure so i would not even be able to be homeschooling my kids yeah. and i think it would be like full on and you guys like i said i definitely think you guys deserve parents of the year awards for what you guys are doing taking your kids to the games and then having to go through everything that you have been through um so yeah like i really wanted to chat with you guys and stuff and share a bit of your st story going to the games and coming back and everything uh with the general public so yeah tell me how was the games overall yeah oh i think it was absolutely awesome i mean um first of all we were just stoked to actually make it to the games as a team yeah. i think that was a goal we set ourselves a while ago um and then being the current climate with COVID and stuff, I think it was a big doubt to whether we'd actually go or not. Yeah. And so we just sat down one day and sort of had a meeting and said, all right, do we want to have a go at actually getting there or are we just going to bypass the opportunity? Yeah. Um, and we literally just decided, no, nah, we're just going to go for it. Yeah. And um, yeah, so that was a bit surreal and get there which felt like a marathon in itself um I could just move back a bit <laughs> and then um and actually being there we we had a blast we surprised ourselves I think um, surprised we surprised everyone <laughs> <laughs> we did Hunter, way stop. better than Hunter, we stop. anticipated in doing yeah I think our goal was top 20 I think yeah. Yeah, and then top 10 is like, that's like, like I was saying to other people that I've spoken to, like in the past, no offence to Aussie teams or anything, but usually we suck at the games. Like, and then for our Pacific teams, absolutely just crushed it this year. And you guys even had event wins and stuff. Like, how cool is to be able to say that? Like, yeah, it, it's pretty cool. I think, yeah, we, we, We've tested a lot of workouts going into the games, um, just based off different, I guess, qualifiers and stuff. Yeah. Um, so we felt confident with a lot of movements that's in our wheelhouse, but we never ever anticipated event wins or second places Ow! for that matter or whatever it may be. Yeah. So, yeah, we were just absolutely stoked. I think that's sort of just, I think now it's just like, Feel the fire knowing that we are capable so we're just going to tie up a few, a few loose ends and who knows be on the podium next year hopefully yeah I, I think that you guys have definitely got the potential to be on the podium like I I actually thought it was going to happen this year and then like you guys dropped down a little bit on that final day but I was just like oh my god like just holding my breath the whole time I was like please let us get an Aussie team or like a Pacific team up there and you guys same came so close and it was just awesome like even though you guys didn't get onto the podium like you guys the achievement that you guys did for a, an Aussie team like I said in the past we have never had that happen and you know like you guys that aren't had like COVID and stuff and trying to train together and you guys juggle all these kids between both families like it's like amazing to see what your achievement has been and stuff so tell me, um, how did it feel when you guys were the first team to beat Rich's team in an event all weekend? Like, the <laughs> like, look, to be honest, I think we were never really focused on them as such. Yeah. We were just, um, I guess the biggest thing was came close on a few other events. Wow. It was like, oh, you know, we, we nearly did, but never did. Yeah. And I think... And I think what made the win special, not only was it an event win, but it was inside the Coliseum and the atmosphere in there, I think this is like next level compared yeah. to outside where most of the events are. And then actually not only beating them, but we beat them by like quite a considerable margin in the end on that workout. Yeah. We were like, we didn't know what hit us really. Yeah, it was so cool to watch. Like I was just like on the edge of my seat and it was just awesome. And like I've been to the 
uh, CrossFit Games in that stadium. And I could just imagine what the stadium would have been like, especially like having that was the first event that Mayhem didn't win. Like that was even yeah. cooler. So it was awesome. So, yeah, um, <laughs> <laughs> Caitlin, what's it like um, having your husband on the team? Like, do you guys ever <laughs> like butt heads a bit? <laughs> um. It, I like it, 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 it is good. I do, I do love it. Um, but also there's like also things where it's like, just shut up, just go yeah. away, just leave me alone. No, I don't want to do that kind of thing. Yeah. As every relationship, I guess. But for the most part, uh, like I wouldn't have it in any other way, to be honest. Yeah. Um, he, like I've said on that interview before, he knows me better than I know myself, really. Yeah. So that helps a lot. How long have you guys so, been together been- for? Six years? Six years? Yeah. Any more kids? No way. <laughs> <laughs> that is a firm no. no. <laughs> after uh, after your travels and having imagine taking another one, a third one to the CrossFit Games next time. <laughs> that is a definite no go. <laughs> yeah. I think two's enough. I think next time if if conditions are different and you can just travel back and forth i think these two be staying with grandma for a couple of weeks yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah fair enough yeah um so tell me about like this whole travel and getting there and then your flights getting cancelled and stuff and then being stuck in tokyo airport like that just sounded yeah. horrendous yeah so first of all to leave we had to get um all these special travel exemptions just to be able to leave Australia. Yeah. Um, and then, I mean, CrossFit is not really a recognized sport, I should say, in the government's eyes or in, in Australia, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, so there's a was a bit of back and forth. Uh, at least um, CrossFit um, Australia helped us out in that regard, saying that this is a professional sport. They're professional athletes. They're not just traveling to go and take part in some backyard competition as such. Yeah. Uh, so there was that. And then there was, um, we had to get vaccinated and it had to be, you know, certain time frames. There was a minimum time period before we leave. We had to get that. Um, your mandatory testing for travel, all that sort of stuff, which was in certain time frames as well. That was just for leaving. Um, over there, it wasn't too bad. I think America is pretty, how would I say, relaxed. Relaxed compared yeah. to America. Yeah, I was speaking um, to they- like Royce and Loz and M, and they all said that once they arrived in America in the airport and stuff, it was like as though nothing had happened. Like it was just back to normal. I mean, yeah. people had masks and um, there were still signs up and everyone's sort of trying to be cautious, but it wasn't, um, I think it wasn't something that was like debilitating people's lives or day-to-day being or such. Oh, like, yeah. you know, no one was was stuck or locked down or yeah. stopped from doing it. Yeah. So I think that's a big difference where I think Australia is trying to sort of eradicate it. I think America is more trying yeah. to, manage it as such. yeah um it's just a noticeable difference um getting to the games was good there was you know they um if you were vaccinated they didn't even test you when you got there they were happy for you to compete as long as you didn't show any symptoms yeah um everyone who wasn't vaccinated obviously got tested i think on a couple of times yeah i think a few times yeah um and then we didn't really even worry about it again until on the way home. <laughs> so that's when all the fun started, really. Oh, um, yes. Yeah, we had flights booked through New Zealand. Yeah. Because, uh, I mean, as far as we understood before we booked everything, it was you could transit through Auckland Airport as long as you weren't there for more than 12 hours. And that seemed to be the norm with, the majority of the airports like you can transit through new zealand uh, through hong kong singapore wherever you wanted to go as long as it was within a, a 12 hour or i think it's up to 24 hour period yeah um but then because australia and new zealand's got that um bubble safe travel bubble agreement that you can travel back and forth between the two 
uh, without quarantine, even though it's been suspended for the foreseeable future. Yeah. Um, they just said, I mean, there was probably another paragraph, five or six pages down that I didn't read that said, no, if you're transiting through or to or from Australia, you can't transit through. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that meant that we couldn't get on the plane and then we were left scrambling to find other flights. And then, as you would know, there's very limited options available at the moment. Um, so it meant either waiting for possibly weeks or months for mm -hmm. people to find us flights coming home or just biting the bullet and buying some new tickets, which we ended up doing. Yeah. And then as luck would have it, we were stuck in the Hong Kong airport for um, nearly three days because of the volcanic ash somewhere. <laughs> From Japan or Japan. something. Really? Uh, I thought it was like COVID reason why you guys were stuck there. I didn't realize that it was like like a climatic thing. Like, wow. So I just, it, was, it was luck was not on our side at just... all in any way, shape, or form. No. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And how was um that experience? Like just being stuck. And I just remember seeing your stories and having like you guys having the little uh stories of where you were sleeping and all that kind of stuff like oh my god like I bet you're blessing thinking that that hotel room right now even though you're stuck in there for 14 days is like pure heaven compared to being stuck in the yeah. airport oh, absolutely yeah, yeah sleeping on a bloody floor they couldn't even get beds for us or anything so we're just literally there was a bunch of people just in this one section that had to just lay on the floor and sleep so trying to get two small children <laughs> yeah. comfortable on the floor was not easy so we haven't had much sleep of late so <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. I don't know how you guys are doing it like it's incredible so I... <laughs> oh, to be honest, we when we heard it we just start laughing because it's like it was, what else are you serious like you know you had so many car like things and there's like this on top of it it's good couldn't get upset anymore it's just oh well yeah <laughs> it and we'll get home eventually <laughs> yeah it's about five days to get home but we, <laughs> we got here <laughs> uh, but when do you actually get to get out of um quarantine uh tuesday the 31st yeah okay. tomorrow week uh awesome so you're halfway through almost almost, almost. yeah almost. Almost. today we're halfway yeah yeah awesome so tell me um How's it been like, was there any other people at the CrossFit Games with their kids? Like, I don't even think I saw any Thoris daughter with her child. Like, uh, no, her kids stayed at home. Um, I think for the most part, when, people who weren't really from Australia didn't have. So the biggest reason for us to take kids with was the unknown of coming home. So yeah, um, we knew that that risk was there of us being stuck there. Yeah. And with two young kids obviously you know if we're stuck there for two or three months then you know how what do you do i mean i can't expect my mum to wash them <laughs> <I'm the crack. laughs> that was the biggest reason for us taking in the same with the Mansies. they weren't willing to tell the kids oh we'll be back and then it meant for you know potentially four or six months well, at been, worst case scenario yeah, exactly. but it's been six weeks so even if we yeah. had left them it would just be at best six weeks yeah. that we've been away so and i think other countries their travel situations i mean you can fly from the west back to europe or you can fly back to anywhere in the world and as long as you're as long as you're test negative before you fly you, you go straight back into your normal routine so i think that's what makes it hard coming from from here yeah um, and like that given different circumstances that we travel again next year i mean we wouldn't hesitate leaving the kids with family if yeah. it meant that we, we knew when we were going to come back yeah yeah and it was more yeah. yeah yeah so what is the plan for next year um, nothing said in concrete as yet. I mean, 
I know Caitlin is definitely thinking about possibly going back as an individual. Yeah. As a goal. Um, I mean, for the, um, for me, it'd be definitely on a team because being a bit older as I am, I'm pretty much master's athlete. So how old are you? I'm 37 this year. Oh, I'm like, I'm like up there with you too. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, so for me, it'll be either either cheering Caitlin on or as a team. But, um, you know, even if Caitlin doesn't decide, we might see if we can find a fill-in for the team or whatever the case may be. Yeah, probably don't uh, fill in for them to get there this time, Caitlin, like ACC, hey? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, God, I still remember that. Like, actually, that's the last time I spoke to you guys in person was... Yep. Give me nightmares. <laughs> right before that event, at the end of day one, with you guys and you guys were just smoking everyone, and then that happened. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> uh, and you're still like having issues with your ankle, so just a little bit like for some people who'll be watching this. Obviously, you competed at ACC and you had already qualified for the games, and then you. Um, were helping CrossFit Urban get their team to the game. So you obviously filled in. And then they had that um, running rope climb workout. And then the mats had the gap in between them. And I remember you coming down off the mat and your foot got in between the gap. Yeah, and like you totally ruptured whole heap of ligaments in your ankle and stuff. And yeah, like you guys would have absolutely dominated that whole weekend, but then that incident ruined like your whole chance of going to the games that year as well so yeah a- well it actually kind of worked out in a in a not a good way I, i'm not going to say good because what happened to my ankle was horrendous and i'm still paying for that now so i've had to change the way i move with most things yeah um but like that year was it was 2020 when covid first hit so yeah. it was kind of like kind of okay that it had happened you know what i mean like so it's you know we wouldn't have gone to the games anyway because it was all cancelled for the teams and whatnot anyway so yeah probably a good year to happen i guess yeah so um kind of look at the positives right <laughs> not so yeah exactly 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 right so just have the second baby so then that's done and then yeah on to doing other things <laughs> so um if Caitlin decides to go individuals, Johan, what things do you reckon you'll have to improve yourself to step it up a little bit on the team if you guys need a fill-in? So what things do you um, work on? I, being a taller athlete, there's, there's a couple of things. Um, like even the biggest one that stands out to me is sort of like handstand push-ups. They're not my strong point. His arms are like twice the length of anyone's. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but it's, not, it's, it's just is what it is. And like, you know, normally with the CrossFit stuff, like you've got a box requirement, you got to put your hands on this box, whether you're tall or short, doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, but it's naturally, it's a lot harder for me. So it's definitely something to work on. And I think in general, probably another thing I'd like to focus on is just, um, just overall strength really so whether it be squat or snatch or clean and jerk yeah if i can up on on those bits and pieces i think then should be a well more rounded athlete heading into the games next year i think there's a lot of us a lot of stuff that we do that we're really good at and that showed on the field whether you know we were wishing for more worm workouts because we we train with that bloody thing. we train harder than the games so, actually was with that worm to be honest so we hard. trained so hard with that worm <laughs> we were wishing and praying for more worm workouts of the games because we trained with that thing day in day out Hunter, please. um and I think it showed too when we had that 40 hand clean and jerks on the end of that one workout and we we knew we couldn't hold on to it from start to finish. So it was, it was great to reel everyone in on that. So, I mean, looking back at past games, you see all those workouts where they do like three rounds of like 20 burpees, 20 clean and jerks. You know, that's the grindy, gross stuff that I think the four of us are really good at. Yeah. And we were hoping for more stuff like that, but it just didn't pan out that way. So. Yeah. 
So, Caitlin, if you want to go back to the games as an individual, what things do you think you need to work on? Um, I think I definitely need to work on more, like, gymnastics capacity, um, like handstand obstacle, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and just my general, general strength as well, I think. Um, just obviously from complications with Knox not being able to train for quite a long time. Um, obviously, I've lost a lot of my strength. So, I am mean, even just building that back now. So, that's obviously going to take a while yeah. to, to rebuild. But um, I, mean, I just want to just try and had a baby. So, um, and for normal human beings, <laughs> not so normal, <laughs> they take like years to come back. So, I mean, you're doing pretty well. <laughs> Oh, thank you. <laughs> do what I can. Yeah. <laughs> so what else do you need to think you need to work on? Yeah, just gymnastics capacity, like my grip strength, that kind of thing, just to being able to hang on a little bit more. I don't know. What else do you reckon, Johan? My deadlift strength, just stuff like that. Like my yeah. glutes and my hammies aren't the strongest. Um, I'm very quad dominant. So yes. um, just working on things like deadlifts and, yeah, just general strength again, I guess. Yeah. Anything to add to that? No, you still kick my ass in every single oh, whatever. workout. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say this. She's she's probably our own worst enemy in that regard. She'll say, oh, I need to work on all these things. I'm like, no, <laughs> you're still pretty damn good at them. <laughs> oh, but like looking at all the other females in the spectrum, yeah. you know, like I'm probably average, you know what I mean? Like compared to, to those kind of girls. Yeah. So to, to actually get back to that stage I have to get a lot better at everything I guess yeah well I definitely yeah. think you can do it so you've proven that after you had um Hunter like you're able to come back and stuff and you came back pretty quick and like it blows my mind that back then you had um Hunter and then I just remember hearing stories of you I think you were breastfeeding backstage at regionals and stuff and no <laughs> yeah. one even like brought this up or anything and then obviously when Kara had her baby they're all like oh Kara's had her baby and she's doing this yeah, stuff and it's like oh it's already kind of been done and Caitlin made the things and Caitlin did this and stuff but like obviously I know Kara is like so well known so it does overshadow a lot of stuff but I mean it should never take away your achievements and I was actually very happy with Tori and Pro this year they uh, they actually spoke about the other mums and not just focused on like the most well-known which was so good to see yeah 100 percent. even at like the games that were going on about how mayhem kept on getting all of the coverage and stuff and mm -hmm. like for people back home that's really annoying because like yes they're an amazing team yes they're number one whatever it's got rich in the team blah 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 it's cool but back home they want to see the, their loved ones competing yeah so it's kind of unfair even when we were winning by far in that snatch yeah. uh, bike yeah. workout they're like oh yeah crossfit urban energies winning oh back to mayhem i like, know we, we personally want all, all the coverage that's not what we want we just want everyone to have like that's even right. playing, you know like i think it's just unfair i i agree with you with that i definitely think that they took a lot of the limelight away from the other teams who were winning in events and stuff because i mean viewers i guess love watching rich training so they're going to be like, yeah. okay, we can get all of our viewers and our money and stuff from that. But then they forget about the people that are actually wanting to see other teams, you know, like split it into two screens and have Rich Framing on one half and have the lead team on the other half. Like it's not. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So. I agree. Yeah. What was your, so each of you, what was your most favourite event from the CrossFit game? <laughs> Um, I think for us, well, for me personally, I really enjoyed the, um, the big Bob, big Bob bar muscle up. What do we do? Bar muscle up, toes to bar and then big Bob again. That yeah. was a really fun work. We were not far behind Froning's team. Like we just trained. I just like, I just enjoyed all of it really because we trained so hard. You yeah. know what I mean? Like trained so hard as a team to be good at these things. Yeah. So I feel just really proud of the team because because we actually showcased what we had been working so hard at. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. And also the, the worm one was pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> what about for you, Johan? I think for me, actually, a big surprise was the very first workout was the swim paddle. Oh, yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
That's we true. were going into it thinking, oh, I mean, I love swimming. Like I grew up playing swimming so and good. water polo, but as, as when you've got a team, it, you're just as fast as your slowest person. So we were really worried going into that because Jay Lee, and when it comes to open water, she um, she panics a little bit. And so we were like, okay, we know this is probably not going to be great, but just do what we can. And at the end of the day, we walked away with a sixth place. Yeah. Event that was it your team that was racing um, our side to the finish line? Yes. That's right. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That was so Sorry. cool to watch. I think you were, no, on the other team was yelling at Trey, I think, to hurry up or something. Who ended up winning? Yeah. <laughs> I think they, I got, think they us. got us by a spot. I think they got yeah. fifth. We got six, I think. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah that um, was I mean, cool. I don't care coming second to a, another a Pacific team. Yeah, and they're so does, awesome. Doesn't they're doesn't so matter. awesome. <laughs> no, that's awesome. So, once you get out of quarantine, what's the first thing you guys are going to do? <laughs> well, it's actually hilarious because we're like, oh, God, we've just registered for the fittest three. So that's on September 11. So we're going to have like a week and a bit training before we go to that. And then Jaylee and I, we're registered, oh, sorry, we're registered for the butterfly effect as well on the Gold Coast. So yeah. Um, September 11 is the fittest three and then September 12 is butterfly effect. So one comp wow. one day and another comp the next day. Um, so yeah, we're just going to be training for that, I guess. And then I suppose some decisions have to be made on, uh, on what I'm going to do like individual or team or yeah, what's going to happen. So it's kind of hard because I'm like, oh, yeah, I just want to. I just want to see how I go in like the qualifiers, like as to kind of how I stack up towards the other girls and stuff like that. But then I might kind of like think that's too late for a yeah. villain. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I don't really know which way to go about it, to be honest. So I don't know. Just need to kind of try and figure that out somehow. Yeah. But I mean, you could always maybe do some of the Rogue Invitational or Waterpalooza events. And then yeah, so well, I've back up against I've, them girls, and then you can use that as a platform, maybe. Yeah, well, I wanted to go back to Waterpalooza, but that's not going to happen because that's what in January. <laughs> yeah. January, how the hell am I going to get there? And the cost, <laughs> and COVID, and the kids, and quarantine, and I'm not going to go through all that again. If no. I'm assuming that's still going to be around in six months or whatever it is, it's not even that. Yeah. So I don't think that is an option, unfortunately. Yeah. No, I mean, like just doing them at home. You could do the workouts. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah. I could definitely do them at home. Yeah. yeah. But so then it's nothing like right doing it. Yeah. 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 That's definitely something I could do for sure. Yeah. Something like that, maybe. Yeah. What about um, are you going to do anything together, like without the kids have a break, maybe? Oh, we've, we've spoken about it. We actually said the other day that. Um, Omar can have the kids for two days or something once once yeah. we get out because we need a break. <laughs> we need a break. Yeah, it's been um, yeah. it's been really hard. And Knox has been a little bit off as well. So I think he's teething real bad and jet lag and stuff. So he's been sleeping absolutely horrible. Yeah. And as good as the beds are, they're still really hard. Better yeah. than the floor, but they're still you, you wake up and your body's real stiff and stuff. So yeah. Yeah, we just can't wait to get back to a comfortable bed. Um, Hunter will go back to kindy for his three days a week and his gymnastics. Yes, he's excited to go back to gymnastics. Um, and yeah, just getting back into the gym, really. Just like to yeah. see all the members and to see, um, yeah, just get back to, to normal life and back to the gym and yeah. yeah. I, miss, I definitely miss the members. <laughs> yeah, for sure. We've had so much support from them. It's been so amazing. Yeah, definitely. Like, I mean, because you guys have, you guys are co-owners of both gyms. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. So, and then does Tommy, does Tom Lendl coach at your one? At yes. The one that at you the have? Early. He works at Burley. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I've seen quite a bit of posts and stuff go up and I'm assuming that Jaylee and that are back in Australia. Yeah, they're in Sydney. They're in at the Sydney moment. quarantining. Yeah. 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 Well, at least we know that they're back. So you'll have yeah. everybody to partner with you for that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, that's good. All right. Well, is there yeah. anything else you want to chat about? 
Um, I know you guys are super busy with your kids and stuff, so just wanted to. Oh, we're not really that busy in quarantine. I promise oh, you. it's just they're, just they're just busy. It's just yeah. hard to like tame them all the time. That's the hardest thing. And then this one's wincing because he doesn't. He wants to sleep and then doesn't want to sleep, but then yeah, you you know what it's like. Just kids being kids. <laughs> well, mine's now eighteen, so I don't have to worry about kids anymore. Oh, amazing! Perfect. <laughs> Like the perfect age. See you later, mate. <laughs> yeah, fully. Yeah. But then you don't want to wish time away because it goes like that. Oh, it does. Like I literally look back now and I'm like, how is my kid even 18 years old? Like it's just insane. Like it just passes by so fast. I think if you had multiple kids, but like you guys do, obviously time goes a lot slower because you're juggling them both and you're having you've got more kids and it's yeah. spread out longer. But I only had one. So for me, it's just like zoomed by and yeah. it's incredible to think that yeah like it's like overnight he went from being a baby to a teenager to now pretty much an adult like it's just crazy so it is crazy isn't it? <laughs> Never that, yeah. <laughs> yeah absolutely all right well thank you so much for chatting with me and um no, don't worry. once yeah. uh covid clears up and stuff i have like i definitely want to get up to the gold coast and come and hang out with you guys and do it in-person kind of vlog thing and share a little bit about you guys because I just feel that you guys are not talked about enough and I think that so many people would love to like hear more about you know from you guys and stuff like that as well so yeah I definitely think a lot of people relate you know what I mean like we we're not about like wanting publicity or you know seeking publicity or wanting anything like that like they talk about Cara they talk about Annie having kids and all that stuff and like it's water for ducks back to us, really. We don't really mind. Like, yes, we've got kids and all that kind of stuff as well. Like, I understand their reasoning for talking about them and not about us. But I just think, like, it would be so relatable for the general population Absolutely. to kind of talk about our story. You know what I mean? Like, or talk about other people's story like ours. Yeah, kind exactly. of thing. So, yeah, that's in that regard. I think it's important to talk about it. Yeah, um, specifically for us. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just for people in general. Yeah, exactly. And the fact that you guys are able to be on a team together, have your kids there and just show to other people that it can be done. It's hard, but it definitely can be done. Like you just have to, you know, suffer through the, you know, the other little things, but at the end of the day, it's worth it. And you get to share this journey together, but also with your kids. So it's cool. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. (laughs) All right. (laughs) I'll chat to you guys soon and enjoy the rest of your quarantine and stuff. See you later, Hunter. We'll try. We'll try and survive. We'll try and survive. (laughs) Yeah. Don't uh, don't strangle each other yet. (laughs) No, all right. (laughs) We'll try all that. God. (laughs) Like I said, you guys are doing a phenomenal job, and I think that people around the world, if they knew what you guys were having to go through, like they'd just be fine. Like, ah, thanks, Maz. You're a legend. Thanks, (laughs) Ed. Thanks for right, the time. I'll catch you guys later. See you. Yeah, good. Bye. See ya. Bye. Bye.